So this is the Adam Pluto from Analog Devices. It's billed as an SDR active learning module. That's a software defined radio learning module. This is um, it's really aimed at people who want to learn about software defined radio and who are getting into uh, RF products maybe for the first time. It's quite a capable little device though. It will tune RF from 350 MHz right through to 3.8 GHz. Uh, with a bandwidth somewhere from 200 kHz right up to 20 MHz. It's based on the analog device's AD9363RF chip and also has a Xilinx FPGA on board. So let's take a look today at what add-on Pluto is. Um, what do you get in the box? What does it say on the box? First of all, it really is built as a learning module for people who are getting into RF and RF products or who are getting into software defined radio. It give, you get access to Analog Devices engineering curriculum online where you can learn all about RF and SDR uh, and it says that you can measure RF signals, acquire and decode RF signals, build ISM band point-to-point -point communication systems. ISM band is the industrial, scientific and medical band which I believe is a license free uh, RF band. You can use it with MATLAB or Simulink. You can create signals and play them over RF. You can visualize RF signals uh, and you c it supports Windows, Linux desktop, Linux embedded or OS X. I don't know why they call it OS X. It's Mac OS. It's not been called OS X for years. Uh, it's also flexible hardware and software. What I mean by flexible and software options is that uh, it's open source. All the software is open source and available online and the hardware is open source. All the schematics are available online for that too. Uh, so they act actively encourage you to open up the Pluto, take it apart and hack about with it. Um, so let's take a look at what's actually inside the box. What do you get when you get Adam Pluto? We've got the device itself, we have the USB cable, a couple of antennas, and a USB C to USB A converter, and a, a loop through cable. So you that's just so you can loop the RX and the TX together um, and look at your own signals. Let's have a look at the Pluto. This is Adam Pluto, has a transmit and receive connections on the top, uh, two micro USB connections and a tiny little button that you can push with uh, a, a safety pin. The button I think is originally configured as a reset but because the software and everything is open source you can probably re uh, redeploy that for your own purposes, maybe for a push to talk or push to transmit. Um, there's a couple of LEDs inside there, and the two screws to take it apart. Now, this is a revision C board, and here's a little thing. If you're lucky enough to get revision C or above, which you will if you're buying this now, although there's only one transmit and one receive um, broken out to the outside case, I believe that on the inside of this, there is a second transmit and a second receive port. Um, although the website does say that during manufacture they don't test those ports but they are populated uh, and if you want to mess about with the software you should be able to get access to them. Now as someone once said, uh, as engineers we don't like to turn things on, we like to take them apart. So let's um, open up Pluto and see what's inside. This is the first time I've ever seen inside one of these. I've never even powered up the Pluto or began to use it yet. And there we go, what's on board. Now this is the AD9363 chip from Analog Devices which does all the RF processing. Uh, and this is a Xilinx Zinc FPGA. There's some DDRAM, um, some power supply stuff. And indeed we can see on board a second uh, UFL connector for transmit and receive and also a clock in um, connector and a clock out connector. So it looks like this is a pretty flexible board. There are a number of headers 
Uh, I've no idea what these are yet, but I believe uh, that you can break out some GPIO lines uh, here, and uh, I'm not sure what's on here, but um, it's brilliant that analog devices have brought these lines out to headers so that we can hack around with them. So I think then uh, we should have a look at the software and look at maybe using a practical example of using this thing. Okay, so let's power up the Pluto for the first time. When you power up the Pluto using the USB cable, you'll find that it appears as a USB drive on your computer. So find the Pluto SDR drive and launch info.html from there. And you'll get um, all the built-in getting started guide. Um, there's a description of of what the Pluto is, and then there's getting started drive. And I like uh, I like this bit. For those who do not read instructions, do the following steps. So I'm going to do them. Uh, I'm going to install the the drivers and the library and so on. Uh, and then we'll come back and we will see uh, how we get on with actually using uh, the Pluto. Okay, so I've encountered a problem. Uh, whilst trying to install the drivers for MacOS, um, it wants us to install uh, Horrendous, which is a, a driver that allows you to use Horrendous to get access to the Pluto. However, um, it's not supported on Mojave, which is my version of... Uh, Mac OS. So we're kind of at an impasse there. Okay, so I won't be able to use uh, some of the tools that I'd like to have shown you this morning, the ones that come uh, with the Pluto, to show how this device works. Now, the Pluto is a really interesting device, and if you can get it set up properly on your machine, then uh, the onboard FPGA actually runs a full Linux system and you can configure the USB port to do USB Ethernet um, by opening the drive that it appears as, opening the config.txt file, following the instructions within the text file on how to set up an IP address for the device. Once you've set up an IP address for the device, you can actually log on to it as though it were uh, a Linux computer, which in fact it is. And from there you get low level direct access to the hardware within the Pluto. But I can't do that at the moment because uh, the horrendous driver isn't supported on my machine for the time being. Maybe that will change by the time you see this. Um, or maybe you can just try it and see if it works. I don't really don't want to disable uh, SIP on my uh, iMac. So I'm not going to do that just now. However, I do believe that Adam Pluto also works with um, GNU Radio and Universal Radio Hacker. However, all is not lost if you um, can't or won't uh, set up your macOS to get the networking working for this. There are another of other options. The Pluto device is really smart. It has a fully built-in Linux computer running on that Xilinx FPGA in there and you can access it through a number of ways if you open the config.txt file which appears on the root uh, of the drive that this appears as when you plug it in when you plug this into USB it, it appears like a USB drive and there's some files on there if you edit the config.txt file you can actually set up um, USB Ethernet networking there's a link in that file to further instructions on how to do that but if you can't get that working there's Another alternative, it also appears when you plug this in as a serial port on your machine. Now, so you can actually log into this device as though you were logging in across a serial port. And the baud rate is uh, 115,200. Login name is root and the password is analog. And from here, oh, you're actually running in the Linux virtual machine, running inside the Pluto.
Now there are further instructions online as to what you can do once you're there.